Hey, how you doing? It's your old pal, Jazz McKay, and uh, he's back. I'll explain right after this. Before we go any further, please subscribe to my channel and click on that little bell so you get notified every time we've posted a new video, which we do pretty regularly. Well, now that sports has been definitively absorbed by the ultra left as ball players ritualistically bow down to Marxist terrorists as they burn American cities, there's nothing more for Keith Olbermann to uh, actually accomplish over at ESPN. So once again, he's dropping that whole sportscaster facade and, and coming out as a straightforward, psychotic, brain dead liberal demagogue. Olbermann has left ESPN now for the fourth time so he can devote himself to helping Joe Biden get elected by hosting his own YouTube show. He calls his little show the worst person in the world, which is kind of appropriate, but uh, I think just uh, Keith Olbermann, douchebag, would be even better. Now, watching the show will not do your blood pressure any favors, but it does help clarify what's at stake if people like Olbermann can exploit the empty vessel known as Joe Biden to secure power in Washington. Watch this clip. So let us brace ourselves. The task is twofold. The terrorist Trump must be defeated, must be destroyed, must be devoured at the ballot box. And then he and his enablers and his supporters and his collaborators and the Mike Lees and the William Barrs and the Sean Hannity's and the Mike Pence's and the Rudy Giuliani's and the Kyle Rittenhouse's and the Amy Coney Barrett's must be prosecuted and convicted and removed from our society while we try to rebuild it and to rebuild the world Trump has nearly destroyed by turning it over to a virus. Remember it, even as we dream of a return to reality and safety and the country for which our forefathers died, that the fight is not just to win an election, but to win it by enough to chase, at least for a moment, Trump and the maggots off the stage and then try to clean up what they left. Remember it even though to remember it means remembering that the fight does not end November 3rd, but in many ways will only begin that day. Now you might notice that Oberman doesn't say exactly what crimes, what alleged crimes that Trump and his collaborators must be uh, guilty of, but never mind that. I'm sure they'll find something. I mean, after all, there's no shortage of Leventre Berea's in the Democrat Party. Berea, by the way, for those of you that remember your history, was Stalin's head of the secret police, whose motto was, you show me the man and I'll find you the crime. It must make Keith Olbermann just giddy with excitement that Kyle Rittenhouse is already behind bars for the crime of defending himself against Black Lives Matter terrorists who were trying to kill him. I guess the rest of us would have to be imprisoned on openly ideological grounds, right? It's like Dennis Prager said recently, it's hard for we Americans who have never spent any time in a country like the Soviet Union to fully comprehend just exactly how intolerable life is under totalitarianism nor can most of us wrap our heads around the United States becoming that kind of a country in the near future. Which is why I want to show you this clip from Dennis Prager as he tries to answer a question from a, a young woman named Maria who escaped from Venezuela. She asked him, how do I explain to uh, my fellow college students exactly how bad things are in communist countries? When I was 21 years of age, I went to the Soviet Union for a month. I spoke to dissidents, people who did not like communism. It was a very difficult four weeks. One of the reasons I, I, was, I was actually sent there, I was sent uh, to uh, help specifically Jews to get out who wanted to leave and to bring in religious items for those who wanted to be able to practice their religion there. I came home and I began lecturing at the age of 21. I have a very strange life. I realized that American audiences did not understand when I spoke about totalitarianism. And I realized that the opposite was also true because when I was in the 
the Soviet Union and I would speak about freedom, Soviet citizens would often say, Niet et anarchia. Said, what you're describing is anarchy. That people could say whatever they wanted struck Soviet citizens as incomprehensible. You can't you can say anything you want in America. That's anarchy. So they didn't understand freedom, and Americans didn't understand totalitarianism. This is, seems to be a limitation in the human, in most humans, not all, in understanding circumstances they have never lived under. I, I felt I was able, I, I was not shocked by the totalitarianism I experienced in the Soviet Union. I, I had an understanding of evil at a very young age, even though I didn't experience it. But apparently, a lot of people either don't want to or can't, and, and it's almost the same thing. So when you describe Venezuela to them, the you know uh, under Chavez or under Maduro, it, it, it they understand the words, but they don't understand what you're saying. And if they do, they don't think it could happen here. We'll do socialism right. That's that's what they that's what they say. All these Marxist regimes, they got it wrong. Or even we'll do communism right. Uh, it's very hard for you to explain to people. And you can tell them, you, you, I wish you would visit Venezuela for a week. I said it at the time, I wish every Soviet citizen could come to America for a year or six months, and every American could go to the Soviet Union for a year or six months. Or not even six months, six weeks. Then maybe Americans would appreciate more what they have here. Thank you, Dennis Prager, for everything you do, brother. And actually, I'd like to thank Keith Olbermann, too, for making it clear that those of us who reject his communist ideology might very well end up in a Soviet-style gulag or a Nazi-style death camp if the Democrat Party gets their way. And if Biden is elected president on November 3rd and the Democrats take the Senate and maintain the House of Representatives, who's going to stop them? You've noticed, haven't you, that the Democrats haven't been screeching on and on and on about gun control lately. What's that tell you? It's a sure sign that gun confiscation is at the top of their agenda should they win on November 3rd. And they'll do it too. That way Oberman and all the rest of his buddies won't have any resistance when they try to load us on the trains. I'm Jazz McKay. God bless America and death to the new world order. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure and like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Share to your social media. And leave nasty comments below. God bless America and death to the new world order.